So, hi, I'm Gina from the Metal Gods Meltdown, and I have the honor to interview Vikram Shankar from Silent Skies. Welcome. Hey, thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Um, can you tell us something about Silent Skies and who is your biggest influence? Sure. Silent Skies is a band that I have with uh, this great singer Tom Englund, who is the front man, main creative force behind the band Evergrey. Um, he reached out to me at this point five years ago to start the band Silent Skies to basically take the, some cinematic music that we really like, especially the quieter side of film and TV scoring, like the more ambient works of Hans Zimmer, uh, Olaf Arnold's Max Richter, and Nils Fromm, largely instrumental composers, and combine that with vocal melodies that were very immediate and direct, and basically bring these worlds together of what might technically be considered pop songwriting with the ambition and the emotional force of the cinematic classical scoring kind of stuff that we really liked. Eventually yeah. we brought in some more influences from electronic music especially, especially on the new album. So that's kind of a bit of the thing that makes us us. Yeah, my personal favorite is Leaving. Which song would you choose to play to Silent Sky Virgin? I guess it would depend on what the person in question really enjoys in terms of whether they like things that are a little bit more poppy and energetic or whether they like things to be really somber and more on the ambient side of things because we have different songs that emphasize these different parts of what we do. I'd say for most people, the song Leaving is, is a great place to start because it's very immediate and it's a little bit more upbeat with the arrangement styles and stuff. Um, I'm also quite close to the song The One, which I think is a little bit more of a like a classic sort of vibe that kind of reminds me of a Simon and Garfunkel song or something. So probably depending on the personal tastes of the person who's, lis who's listening, either The One for something a little bit more relaxed or Leaving for something with a bit more energy. Yeah, I've been listening to it um, during the afternoon, and I must say I'm very surprised. Um, I hope it's a hope it's a good surprise. Yeah, it's a good surprise. <laughs> Don't yeah, worry. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, you never know because I I was just talking to someone earlier today about how they received a promo from Napalm Records, and when they open a Napalm Records promo, they don't really expect it to sound like us. But I think that's part of the benefit of working with Napalm Records is they're a metal label who gets that. You know, metal fans are open-minded and they like connecting with music that isn't pure, you know, metal as long as it still speaks to them in some kind of emotional way, which is, I think, why we connect with a lot of metal fans. Yeah. Um, what can we expect from you live? Um, well, we're, we're definitely thinking about playing Silent Skies live. We don't exactly know what that's going to look like or when we're going to get to do that because we both have busy schedules even when there's not a worldwide pandemic that's you know making it pretty much impossible to plan anything but we really want to bring sound skies to the stage probably in some kind of format where the two of us are backed up by at minimum some live strings like the uh cello player who plays on our album which is a guy named Raphael Weinroth Brown. We'd love to bring him live. And beyond that, all we know is that we really want the the atmosphere and the vibe of our record to translate. So we don't want to compromise on either the the venue choice or the bands we play with or anything like that to make the experience not quite as impactful as we really want. So we're being a little bit selective about the offers we get, but we hope to sooner rather than later bringing our music to the stage yeah that was my next question are there plans touring uh, festival wise yeah, um, we have some offers we haven't formally accepted anything yet um, I think the the summer festival thing for instance is not really the kind of environment that 
just on on paper that would really speak to us in terms of doing a show that's really you know true to the the vibe and the atmosphere of what we do to be honest i think a lot of summer festival fans would find us a complete bummer and and that's okay you know it, it's not the the sort of thing that fits every mood or every occasion but you know if the right offer came along we'd be down to it yeah we will we'll be waiting for that um can you tell us about the songwriting for nectar what experiences ideas inspired the song sure um we were writing in classic pandemic fashion we wrote everything virtually without being together in the same room which was not unique to us because we did our last album that way too because of the geographic distance and it's hard to coordinate us being in the same place at any given time because Tom is so busy with Evergrey and I'm busy with my own stuff that I do in the rest of my musical life so we worked virtually but we worked out a way to do it over Zoom where we were spending four or five hours a day together on video calls so that we could work like in, in real time and if I wanted to try something he could hear it and we could instantly critique it and get it into shape <laughs> And same thing if he wanted to try a vocal part. And that's not something that we could have done on the last album, because on the last album we were just like sending MP3s via email and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's a really inefficient way to work. It's a lot quicker to be able to do something together in real time. So we wrote everything remote. We recorded everything remote in our respective home studios. And so it was very much like an in-house job until we got to the mixing stage where we worked with the ubiquitous Jacob Hansen of Hansen Studios to just put the, the finishing touch on everything. But aside from that, it was a, a true pandemic project, yes. Well, for me, it's a, it's a project that's successful. Awesome. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I mean, we... We had a little bit of a leap of faith trying this thing in the first place to see if anyone would care because we're not metal music, so you can't just assume that people are going to really latch on because most of the people who listen to both Tom and myself, they're metal fans, so we knew that we are going to be giving a little bit of a curveball, but it's been really gratifying that people really seem to understand that we're sounding different than a lot of metal bands, but we're still saying a lot of the same stuff we're still being really dark and melancholic and emotional and atmospheric which is stuff that metal fans really love but we're just kind of packaging it slightly different and maybe making something that you can chill out to when you don't feel like you know going crazy to slipknot or something i don't know just making mm -hmm. a random band but just just an alternative way of expressing emotions and metal fans it seems to me really care about emotions and making sure that their music is emotionally honest. So we just deliver that as best we can. Yeah, but I know your your fans from your former music, that they're going to keep on following you because it's you. Yeah, exactly. And Tom and I have both made careers out of being honest and doing what we want in ways that don't compromise our visions and we're not going to make records that we don't believe in regardless of what the style is and i think thankfully people kind of know that when they listen to something we've done that even if it's not in their comfort zone so to speak that we're making it with heart and we we mean what we say and we mean what we play so you know i i think at least that encourages people to give it a shot and if it's not their thing you know so be it yeah, that's it. Can you give me four words to describe Silent Sky? Four words, you said? Yeah. Um, dynamic, honest, atmospheric, emotional. Yeah, that, that describes it very well. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, these these are all things that we, we think about. I mean, we, we write intuitively, but, but I think as we're writing, we know that these things always have to be a part of what we do. It always has to be emotion first. We always have to be honest to what we want to do. And we love to keep things dynamic and not, you know, just 
slam the listener with as much loud stuff in a short period of time as possible. So we always try to do this sort of ebb and flow and give and take and embrace the space in between notes because you don't always have to just play a nonstop stream of notes. You, the, the times where you choose not to play notes are just as important. So I guess no matter what we do and what styles we experiment with, that's always going to be true. Yeah, and there's always going to be fans. Which three bands would be your ultimate touring buddy? Well, we, we've talked many times that we'd love to tour with Olafur Arnolds. He's, a, I guess, best known as a film composer, a TV composer, but he, he makes solo albums too, and he does tours, which a lot of these people don't do. A lot of our influences, they don't tour. They just stay at home and compose. But Olafur performs, and he kind of performs in not your typical venues. He's more of kind of like a concert hall kind of guy. But he also doesn't really tour with opening acts, so that would be a bit of a challenge. But, I mean, maybe we can change that world. But he would be a dream person for us to tour with. We'd also love to tour with an artist like Catatonia, who are Mm -hmm. on the heavier side but have very similar emotional content to what we do, and they really care about atmosphere the way that we do. Um, maybe a post-rock group like Hammock, who's another big influence for what we do. And I would have said Anathema, but unfortunately they don't exist anymore. But they would have been a natural fit as well, because you know I, I can't really think of a band that's more brutally emotionally honest than they are. So they've been a big inspiring inspiration for me and the way I read. Do you have some final words for your fans, our listeners? Yeah. Um thanks for, you know, checking out what we do because I know that it is a little bit of a leap of faith. I mean if you're if you spend most of your time listening to music with distorted guitars and heavy drums and stuff like that, it can be a little bit of an adjustment period to listen to something that doesn't have these elements but i'm really grateful for anybody who has enough of an open mind to try to you know see what we're going for and be open for something a little bit different because i think you know it it says a lot about metal fans in general that metal fans are willing to even take that leap of faith whether they like the result or not I think the fact that metal fans are so open-minded and they are so willing to try different styles of music and artists that they're not used to or they haven't heard before, you know, really adventurous bunch of listeners, metal fans. So, you know, I thank anyone who's given us a shot. to leave